This video is sponsored by Squarespace. I've been customizing Squishmallows a lot lately, but today I wanted to do something a little different. I'm gonna be needle felting some of my top Squishmallows, my favorites. Some of them I have, some of them I'm still in search of, and some of them I know I'll just never be able to get my hands on, which is okay. Not really. Because now I'll have some little teeny tiny miniature needle felted replicas of them. And that's almost just as good. Almost. I've done needle felting once before. I have some wool left over from that, but I wanted some more color variety, so I ordered a ton more wool online. This way I can have some options of who I can make. Sniffledorf took it upon himself to do a little taste test before I got started. Please not. I picked out some colors for my first Squishmallow. It's a black cat, so it mostly involves a lot of black wool. Oh <laughs> wait, that's not black. <laughs> For needle felting, people use like a foam base or a mat to needle felt on top of. I'm just using some styrofoam from one of my Amazon packages, so I got my foam for free. I'm basically just stabbing the wool a million, million times, times, until I get something that kinda looks like a marshmallow. I decided to take away like half of the wool. I find that when you start out with a smaller ball of wool and then add on top of it, it makes the whole thing more sturdy and less likely to fall apart. I'm not an expert at needle felting by any means. But when I tried it for the first time a while back, a lot of you guys were really impressed. So I don't know. Maybe I'm a natural. Everyone has a talent and maybe, just maybe, needle, needle felting is my calling. Please hold your applause until the end of the video though. Thank you. I still have the single needle thing I used last time I tried needle felting, but this time I also got a multi-needle thing to speed up the process a bit. So instead of one needle stabbing it over and over, now there's like five or six needles stabbing it at a time. Much, much quicker this way. Now that I have a little ball, I layered on some more wool and stabbed that in as well. Some bits of styrofoam did break off and cling to the wool ball I was making. I just stabbed that in too. Some of them fell off, some of them became part of the squish mellow. They worked themselves out. Little by little, I just kept adding on more and more wool. I would have liked to make a huge needle felted Squishmallow, but two things. It's hard to find a bunch of wool of the same color. It normally just comes in like a variety pack of these little tiny packet things. Also, it would just take way too long to do with the time I have. Plus, I don't know how exciting it would be to watch me stab a giant ball of wool for the whole video. <laughs> not really much to talk about there. I'm not using my finger protectors because this multi-needle tool has a guard on it, so it just kind of helps me avoid getting stabbed, or else I would definitely wear them to avoid bloodshed. For the most part, I was just slowly murdering the wool. But at times I did get frustrated with how slow and repetitive the process is, so from time to time you might notice me picking up the pace. The faster you stab, the faster it goes. All right, now that I finally have this little black egg, I can finally start adding Jack the Black Cat's features. I'm starting out by making some cat ears. For the ears I had to be more precise, so I'm using the single needle tool I have. Also, notice my finger protectors are on, so I don't stab myself to death. The single needle doesn't have a guard, so the finger protectors are necessary. Trust me. I got a little impatient when I wasn't getting very far with the ears and switched back to using the multi-needle tool. I then stuck the ears into the black cat. These could be mouse ears, they could be bear ears, they could honestly be anything. They're not very well defined, so I shaped them up a bit with a tiny shear that came with the needle felting kit. And while I was at it, I also went around and trimmed off any excess hairs that were sticking out. Please subscribe, really helps the channel. There's a lot of small details. It's hard to shape something so tiny with needle felting. I tried to make a nose, but it's just too small, so I moved on to the tail for now. I tried adding one, but it just wouldn't stay. I gave up on that entirely. For the face details, I'm moving on to plan B. I'm using Posca Pen. What a surprise. It kinda worked, except not entirely. It kept smudging around and kinda seeping into the wool. What a letdown. It looks like Jack the Black Cat wants to give me a smooch. But no worries, cause I can fix this. <laughs> I went in with fabric paint, which worked much better. I'm just gonna stick to the fabric paint for tiny details. It's not cheating, it's just using my resources. There's many different variations of Black Cat Squishmallows, but the rarest of them all is Jack the Black Cat. I think he's the rarest Squishmallow ever. There's only like 500 of them that were ever made. That's why he has a little 500 in the heart on his ear. Obviously I couldn't write that small to include that detail, but it's there in spirit. Whatever that means. I cleaned up the little guy a bit and that's about it. Just a black blob of a cat. Very cute. Very evil. Another one of my favorite Squishmallows is, of course, Avery! 
I mean, I'm sure you guys saw that coming. <laughs> My love for Avery has no bounds. This styrofoam is definitely more crumbly, more of it's breaking off and becoming one with my squishmallows. Like I said, I got it from an Amazon box, so it's not really meant for needle felting. I thought it would work just as well as the styrofoam square that came with the kit last time, but I was wrong. I'm gonna keep stabbing this mess, but you know what they say. Work first, play later. Sponsored by... Squarespace. Squarespace is where you go when you want to build a website. If you don't know that by now, then you're not paying attention. <laughs> Squarespace is known for its sleek, professional templates. Plus, it offers built-in security and 24-7 support. Head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch your website, go to squarespace.com slash graveyardloon to save 10% off your first website or domain. Thank you, Squarespace, for sponsoring this video. Yeah, we love Squarespace. The thing about needle felting is that when you're doing it, a lot of the times the needles break. Like this one. And that's so annoying. I'm trying to be careful. Obviously, I don't want to have to go get more needles, so I'm just trying to make this work. You really want to try and stab it in up and down motion. Sometimes, if you accidentally stab at an angle, then this happens. <coughs> Swear I won't forget this, why do I regret this? And that's unfortunate. Very unfortunate. <laughs> because now I have to solely rely on my single needle tool, so things are about to take ten times longer. Woe is me. I really have a way with messing things up. I honestly just expect it at this point. On the bright side though, the one and only needle I have left managed to last me through the rest of the video, somehow. <laughs> Lucky me. So here I am, stabbing away, one stab at a time. This is gonna take a while. Avery is a mallard duck, and the mallard ducks that have the green heads are boys. There was some confusion with you guys when I kept calling Avery a boy. Some people, surprisingly a lot of people, think Avery is a girl, and maybe your Avery is a girl. <laughs> but I'm just putting it out there that green-headed mallard ducks are boy ducks. So yeah, glad to clear that up. It's been on my chest for a while. <laughs> We can all move on. These are the basic components of Avery. His chubby little rotund body and his fat green head. No neck Avery, that's what I call him. Squishmallows don't really have a neck, I guess. I'm fusing the head to the body, trying to make it look like one cohesive blob. My needle kinda got jammed into the tool. I don't know how that even happened, so I'm trying to pull it out a bit. No worries. It didn't break, so we're good. Lucky me. While I'm stabbing the head and the body, I'm also kinda squeezing them close together to try and flatten out Avery. Make him look more round. Avery's little tummy is like a lighter brown than the rest of his body, so I'm trying to needle felt a circular shape for that. I then stabbed that into place. I'm trying to make as many components out of wool as I can, and trying to avoid painting them on as much as possible. The tummy does protrude a bit, but come on, whose doesn't? Give the guy a break. He has a little white ring going around his non-existent neck, so I'm stabbing that in. So far he's looking pretty good. He's got little wings on him that I added on. Just stabbed the little flappy stubs into place. In my opinion, they're one of his most defining features. For the details, again, I'm going back in with fabric paint. It would be nearly impossible to needle felt the eyes and mouth and all that for me. It's just way too tiny. Avery turned out really good. He's my personal favorite so far. The next Squishmallow that I'm needle felting is another one that I'm fortunate enough to be in possession of. It's gonna be Connor the Cat. The processes are all pretty similar. It's just stab, stab, stab. Very repetitive. If you haven't caught on yet, then you're not going to at this point. This cow Squishmallow that I'm needle felting is probably my least favorite of the bunch today. The spots on the cow are the most frustrating thing about it. I could have honestly just painted them on there, but no, I decided to needle felt. The black fuzzies were getting all over the white fuzzies, contaminating them. It just wasn't looking as pristine as I like. Not on par with my standards. <laughs> I do have standards, even though it doesn't look like it right now. I will fix this, at least as much as I can. Obviously, I wouldn't leave things looking like this. I would never. <coughs> Connor's got a bunch of little ears and horns and whatnot on his head. Luckily for me, he doesn't have arms, so I don't have to worry about that this time. <laughs> I just want to move on from Connor. He's a nightmare. I added on a big fat pink clown nose. BB. I felt like he was deserving of it. Perfect. <laughs> His spots are just not looking neat. It's really bothering me. So I'm trying to clean up the edges with black Posca pen. It made it look better. It's not great, but it's better. His face is pretty simple. Just two beady black eyes. And some wet droopy ears. And well, there he is. He's done. We don't have to look at him for long though. Moving on.
Another Squishmallow that I really want is a frog called Felipe. I have Wendy the frog. That's for people who want Felipe but can't get him. So that's me. I settled for Wendy. The green wool I'm using might be a little mintier in color than the actual Felipe. Obviously, I have to work with the wool colors that I have. I have a ton of different colors, but this is the closest I have to Felipe. One thing I noticed that makes your needle felting look a lot neater and more professional. Not saying that mine looks professional, but you know. I take pride in it. But yeah, one thing that really helps step it up are the shears. Trimming all the fuzzies off makes everything look a lot more put together. Except for Connor. Connor couldn't be saved, even with the shears. Rest his soul. But all the others look pretty cohesive, and I think I did him justice. And I'd like to thank the shears for that. Felipe is a frog. He has two bulging eyeballs. I basically needle felted an oval and attempted to cut it in half. As much as I love my shears, they're not strong enough to cut through this. So I had to rely on my fabric slash cardboard scissors, and they got the job done. I joined everything together. A little stab here, a little stab there, little stab everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yo. And I ended up with this. Just like Avery, Felipe has a little tummy. It's not protruding out this time as much though because I used less felt and I also stabbed it directly onto him instead of making it separately and then joining them together. I'm learning. It takes time. The rest I pretty much just painted on with fabric paint. It's pretty simple. The nose and mouth look like a smiley face. Cute cute. He is looking a little chubbier than what he's supposed to look like, but overall I think it bears a resemblance. So that's my little Felipe, who I might never find in real life, so this little ball of lint will just have to fill that void. Here's the whole Squishmallow herd. Avery's kind of fallen over. Connor looks like he's melting. And the other two look not bad. I'd say that's a win. Subscribe if you don't want me to melt your face like I did to Connor's. 